Good morning. This morning, uh, we have an interesting uh, chapter before us. Uh, it's in Acts chapter 17, verses 16 to 32. And we have a very interesting conversation between the Apostle Paul and, uh, and the people in the city of Athens. Uh, before we look at it, uh, let's come before God in prayer. Let's pray. Blessing and honor, thanksgiving and praise, more than we can utter, more than we can conceive, be unto you. Most holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, by all angels, all people, all creatures, forever and ever. Let your mighty outstretched arm be our defense, your mercy and loving kindness in Jesus Christ, your dear Son, our salvation, and your true word, our instruction, the grace of your Holy Spirit, our comfort and consolation, to the end and in the end, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you look at Acts chapter 17, um, Paul was waiting for his friends Silas and the Timothy uh, there, uh, the ancient city of Athens. While he was there, he was deeply troubled uh, by all the idols and the images uh, of gods he saw everywhere in the city, the Roman gods and Greek gods local gods, he went to the synagogue, Jewish synagogue, to reason with the Jews and the God-fearing Gentiles. God-fearing Gentiles are not Jews and they are not Christians. They were non-Jewish people who respected the, the God and the religion of the Jewish people. And Paul spoke daily in the public square to all who happened to be there. The city was full of religious people and the educated people who were so obsessed with Greek philosophy and they just wanted to have a discussion and debate with everyone. He also had a debate with some of the Epicurean and the Stoic philosophers. When Paul told them about Jesus and his resurrection, they said, What's this babbler trying to say with these strange ideas he's picked up? But others said, He seems to be preaching about some foreign gods we don't know. So let's listen to him. So they took him to the high council of the city and they said, come and tell us about this new teaching. You are saying some rather strange things and we want to know what it's all about. All the people in the city are talking about you and uh, your religion. Tell us. So, verse 22, Paul stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, see that in, in every way, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So, you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. Verse 24. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather... He himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out 
their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, We want to hear you again on this subject. So this is the situation. Paul was able to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to those religious people in Athens. Many years ago, I heard the history of these altars to an unknown God. Um, I think I... Yeah, I think it was about uh, 10 years ago when I had uh, visited Macquarie University and I happened to meet uh, some of the New Testament history uh, scholars and historians. Uh, so we just talked about it. But this is particularly uh, relevant to us today because it is a story of an epidemic that had hit the ancient city Athens. Some kind of a severe virus infection had affected the people there. They had presented offerings to multiple gods. As I had mentioned before, um, the city was full of Greek gods and, and Roman gods and local gods who either weren't able or didn't care enough to respond. Then they contacted a, a religious priest who told them that they were under a curse and the only solution to the epidemic was to contact a, a miracle worker named Epimenides, Epimenides, who lived on Crete. The story goes that he listened to the people, then told them how to appease whatever God was holding them accountable for their sins. So this guy uh, advised them that the God is angry with you for whatever sin they had committed to him. So this is what you need to do. Uh, they need to, needed to bring in a flock of sheep and uh, wherever one lay down, an altar was to be built and uh, they were to sacrifice the sheep uh, on, on such an altar, wherever they lay down. The altars were designated to an unknown god. So after ad admitting they did not know to whom they were sacrificing, they repented. They didn't know which God, but they repented and followed his instructions. And surprisingly, the, the epidemic came to a close. So they didn't know who did this. So they referred uh to, to the unknown God and we know who did our God did they didn't so that's the story that's the situation 
did the Apostle Paul know this story? There is little doubt that he had heard of the altars to the unknown God because this was a well-known story in the Mediterranean cities at the time. And, and over time, there had been much speculation about who was this God, the unknown God. And it is certain that at, at one point or another, those who wanted to debate the issue would rise to the occasion and explain why they were sure they had the answer. So, uh, Paul using this to intrigue them was not a random act, but Paul was trying to get their attention. Athens was saved from the epidemic, but who saved them? And Paul wanted to explain who did this. Today, um, in our lives, year 2020, it is very easy to be a lot like the Athenians of those days. Just like them, we see the epidemic or a, a pandemic in our case surrounding us. Just like them, we turn to various different sources trying to find the answers. And we research on the internet and we listen to the news, the updated. And no matter where we look, there are no answers. Scientists and the doctors and the experts, God forbid, politicians, all come to us with what they hope is the answer. But the disease rages on. And so, uh, in, in today's passage, Paul stands up and, uh, and uh, reminds them, uh, or reminds us too, of the one who is in charge. Have a look at verse 24 again. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth, and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. So what was Paul's point? God is the one who made the earth. God is the one who made you and me. And God is the one who is in charge of everything. What does that mean for us? First, it means we do not have to be afraid for our lives. We do not have to be afraid for our lives. God, who made all of us, knows our needs. He speaks to us and He is with us. Our lives are in God's hands. Whatever happens to us, He is in us and we are in Him. Why do we need to be afraid? for our own life. Whatever happens, we are in Him. Second, we do not need to be afraid for the future. We do not need to be afraid for the future because God knows. God who created the universe and the time itself exists outside of time. God calls His own name, I Am, because God was, and God is, and God will be. And since He exists outside of our limitations, God already knows what will be, because God has seen it happen. 
Scientists are trying to determine the exact series of events on when this virus first jumped from animal to human, but God already knows. Experts are working on a vaccine and want it to be ready soon, but God already knows when it will happen. God knows when the pandemic will be over. God knows how to make it an end. The fact that God loved the Athenians enough to be with them in an epidemic is awesome. For some reasons, he did that. But what is more awesome is that God loved the Athenians enough to send Paul to tell them his name and the gospel of Jesus. I think this is the main reason that the God uh, spared those uh, Athenians from the epidemic they had. So because of this, brothers and sisters, we too can trust. Trust in the God. Don't need to worry about your life. Don't need to worry about for your future. God holds your life and God holds your future. And He loves you. May you find hope and faith in this part of God's Word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have declared that while the grass withers and the flowers fall, your word lasts forever. May your word be hidden in our hearts and written upon them, that it may last and bear fruit that will last. Help us not to be afraid for our lives. Help us not to be afraid for our future. For we know and believe not the no unknown God, but the God who made the whole universe and loved us enough to send His Son Jesus to die in our place for our salvation. In His name we ask. Amen.